How did you how did you go there? How did you get there and play someone so sick so authentically when you haven't walked in those shoes before, but you handled it with such care and such respect? Well, I think that's the yeah. I mean, the the, the pressure that I felt going into it is the the need to pay respects to so many people that came before us, and there's something that happens when I suppose uh, you know. Yeah, I've, yeah. The, the 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 San Francisco ward scenes, which were obviously in episode eight, we there was a day where it fell on World AIDS Day, and um, I think it started with a scene with Alison Williams, amazing, um, and the scene where she comes to visit Tim, and then we ended up with, you know, going through all of those scenes with Hawk, and. Um, I think what was amazing about this particularly is that everyone who was surrounding it, everyone who sort of was designing it had, and so many people do have uncles and brothers and loved ones that they'd lost or that were living with AIDS or they had looked after their, you know, you go into makeup in the morning and Jordan, I remember Jordan vividly talking about caring for three of his friends, um, staying, you know, sleeping on the floor of their bedrooms at night. And it was just so real that at times it was actually, you know, obviously overwhelming, but as it should be, because I think that exactly is why Ron wanted to write this story. It's why he took from the book and expanded into the 80s. And I think that was what I was found fascinating, especially telling the story of of the AIDS and the ACT UP, um, you know, when they come up at the end, is that you realise there is a, you know, it's joining the dots back to the 50s and about how, you know, queer the queer queer community has dropped uh, at various times in history and it all stems back from um sort of horrendous sort of narratives that are spun in fear-mongering and so it's sort of i don't know it felt it felt uh, emotional and upsetting and uh but never for a second not energizing and um yeah it brought a joy because it felt that i don't know there were some sort of angels <laughs> surrounding yeah. it I felt I mean, every decade helped like I felt like the texture of the air between us changed a little bit yeah. and I think that was a testament to the respect and the love you brought to the work and in every time period especially the 80s and uh, our production designer and a crew who was so respectful of the material it was like there was like a real tone on set of respect uh, for the work, for yeah. the material, and for the generation that we lost, and, and all the people whose stories we were taking part in. And you felt like this <clears throat> sense that like there were just these voices that kind of wanted to come through the story because there were so many obstacles we hit over the course of pre-production and production and while we were filming and putting it out and all these things, and then we put it out and then there was a strike, and but something just wanted to come through in this story. Um, and all these things that seemed like obstacles ended up being just kind of launching pads for us that helped us out in the end. And also it was like incredibly, I mean, it doesn't sound it, but it was incredibly fun as well to make. And, uh, <laughs> it really was. It, it you was. Know, and I think what I do really, when I say uh, we've been spoiled, it's like I really do understand now what like representation means in terms of um, when you do turn up and you're opposite an actor who, without having to say it, you're looking at each other in these scenes going, this is what we've hoped and wished and thought that you know we missing or and everyone is that sort of level of focus that meant that everyone was so respectful of it but everyone just like lent in and those days were long but uh you know with Noah and Jelani as well it's um the love story I think in Fellow Travelers that isn't talked about as much as the one of friendship um particularly you know where you know they end up together in the 80s and and you know, Marcus and Frankie going to the West Coast and Tim following them. And I think that's something that I have taken away from fellow travelers, like what it actually means to be on a set where you, you're not, you know, obviously as a white gay man, you're still at the peak of privilege on the pride flag, but it made such a difference to not have to filter anything. Or there was so, there was so much energy gained from not having to, um, to, uh, you know, having a shorthand, um, that was an emotional tapestry, but it's also hilarious. And um, so, yeah, I think that's, that's the sort of energy that was, I found in that I was like, I get it now. <laughs> like I, and I've always understood 
Yeah. yeah, well, allyship. I don't know. So there's something magical about it. Yeah, there was a real aspect of found family too, and I feel like that bled over into the cast as well. Yeah. Well, and I think that's one of the many reasons why this series is so magical. You watch it and every character feels so connected to one another. I mean, the two of you, it's not easy to play a love story over four decades, like let alone in one movie or one show and over one time period. That's challenging enough to make it really believable and honest and authentic. To play that over four decades is a testament to the work that you two have done to really connect with one another. And it's obvious, I mean, even in the green room backstage, I'm like, these guys are like brothers to each other. Like, it's so fun to see that relationship translate, you know, from on screen to off screen. I'm curious to know, there are so many powerful scenes throughout the series. I can think of five right now at the top of my head. But if you had one scene that you think will forever stay with you, forever will stay with you. Like in 30, 40 years, you'll say that scene, that scene. Yeah. What would it be? Um. <laughs> I've started everyone. You got to do this. It's terrible. Oh. There's so many different ways in which you could answer that question. I'll start with the lowest common denominator, which is... Um, no, I feel terrible. Do you know what? I will, I will, I will say. Like, please. Uh, I, I, will never, I will never forget the Friar Island. What about Friar Island? Well, there's so, uh, there is a lot in Friar Island that I'll never forget, but I do remember, um, I, you know, obviously it's so important to the story, so we mustn't laugh. <laughs> but the, um, obviously the Garden of Eden sequence. <laughs> Oh. And, and it was just, it was, it was amazing because, you know, obviously you had to show the, the cruising area, the, um, what's Dick it Dock. The, the no. Dick Dock. Oh, um, Mirac. Mirac, thank Mirac. you. <laughs> Mirac. Mirac, Dick Dock. Y'all, I did not know we were going in this direction, but here we are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. um, um, we're all friends here, it's right. <laughs> um, I, yeah, it was the, 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 and they had uh, amazing, um, actors that came on to recreate it and it was just there was just one shot where i think we just you know obviously it was just like kind of it was you know i got nervous giggles mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um so that i will remember but also there's other really important I, I think every time we entered a new decade together that first scene we got i mean i have so many there's too many to, to just bring it down to one but every time i got to see what johnny was doing with the character in a new decade and the temperature change and kind of seeing the history of the character that he was bringing in the time period since the last time I'd seen him and was always so revelatory to me and just getting to be present with that and work off of that was so, I don't know, it, it's just really memorable to me. I, I'll never forget the first day we were in the 70s, the first day we were in the 60s, the first day we were in the 80s. It's all kind of seared into me and um, it was just such a partnership from the get-go and um, it was always like a yes and and getting to see that and then trying to bring what I was trying to bring and then feed off that and make it present and make it happen when they were filming and not, we never talked about it very much. We kind of just tried to make it happen when the scenes were happening. Um, there was another one, obviously the last scene of the show, no one had told me that we were going to have real patches of the AIDS quilt and it was one of those moments where I was just leveled just walking onto that set and and then you have to just get out of your way as an actor and let it all come through and trust this history that we'd created uh, of 35 years together um and it was one of the last things we filmed and just walking and looking at those squares and and seeing the real Roy Cohn square and it was just um I mean how could you ever forget a moment like that it was it was um beyond moving and a profound gift to get to even be in the same frame as the AIDS quilt. So. Yeah, that, that scene was unbelievable. It was one of the most powerful scenes of the series for sure. And what a, what a gift to be able to be a part of that and to honor so many people in the way that the both of you did. And there's a big initiative to, um, to have the AIDS quilt displayed permanently, yeah. which I think everyone should get behind. Yeah, beautiful.